Let's take a look at the 8 most essential pieces of equipment for the perfect YouTube studio. Hey everyone, I'm Dom from One Dutch Share Uni Converter. Over my more than 10 years of creating videos, I've had many YouTube backgrounds. Had a dedicated YouTube studio, filmed in various spaces and went from filming with only an old camera to having more equipment that I actually use. While I do believe that in order to start out you don't need all of these things, but as you get more advanced and can even maybe spend money on equipment, there are a few things that I found essential in order to have a nice background and create high quality videos. So I would recommend that you get the ones listed in this video and in the order that they are listed in. I'm usually the first one to say that you can start out with your phone even, but buying a camera will increase the quality of your videos. So while you're at it, get one with good autofocus performance. Autofocus will also speed up your workflow and that alone will up the quality of your videos. One camera that I would 100% recommend is the Sony ZV-E10, which isn't a brand new model, it still stands its ground and is enough for a content creator. It goes for around $600 right now, and I'm actually filming on it. Now, cameras usually come with a kit lens, but when you can, do change that too. But before that, sound quality is very, very important. It's as important as a good camera, so technically this could also be the first item on the list, or at least side by side with a good camera. For YouTube videos, a shotgun microphone is a very good choice. One that you can connect directly to your camera. But since we're talking about a YouTube studio space, you might as well use a studio microphone. Rode video mics are optimal choices or a mid-category studio mic. This one here that I'm using, you can't really see it right now. It costs about $120, but you'll also need an audio interface that you can see back here, or an external audio recorder with an XLR input in order to be able to record with it. For the same price, you can get a Rode video mic too, so the choice is entirely up to you. We've made a video about microphones, so check that out for more information. Now, the heart of a camera is the lens. A lens will ultimately determine the look of your videos. You'll want a lens with good low light performance, ideally at least f1.8, but f1.4 is better. You'll need this to get that creamy out of focus background. Although I have to mention that for example, the ZV-E10 has this AI de-blurring function. So I could technically de-blur the background with any lens without having uh, good low light performances, but you know, it's always better to have a proper lens. Now, depending on your setup, a focal length between 18 mm and 35 is ideal both for indoors and outdoors. You can also buy a good zoom lens to kill two birds with one stone, but a zoom lens with good low light performances can be very, very pricey. I'm talking thousands of dollars, but you can get a good prime for about three, four hundred dollars. For instance, I'm using a 35 millimeter prime, which is good for both a small and big studio setup. When you only have a corner to film in, a longer focal length is better because with a wider one, you need to be really, really close to the lens in order to hide the rest of the space. And that can change the characteristics of your face and you don't want that. So I'm literally an arm away from my camera right now. And another thing that I didn't mention is that if you're using a teleprompter, a wide lens will not work. The reason it's not our utmost priority is because technically you can put your camera on a shelf or on a stack of books. But obviously the reason that you need a tripod is because with it you can have the perfect position for your camera, which is really important. Luckily you don't need to spend crazy money. Even a cheap one can hold a lightweight camera like the Sony ZV-10. The only thing that you need to decide about is if you stand or sit in your videos. If you stand, you might need one that can lift your camera high enough, which will be obviously more expensive. But otherwise, one for like 20 bucks is perfect if you're sitting like me. Like this one, for example. While you can definitely use a window, Getting a light will make your job easier and your videos better. I'd recommend either a softbox light or the convenient ring light. A dimmable light or one where you can also set the color temperature is even better. The key reason you'll need a light is to get a nice even and controlled light on your face, so choose accordingly. Now we've made a video on lights too, so check that out here. So we're getting closer to the less essential gadgets, but they're still important such as an effect or practical light. Something in the background, 
or on the side that creates a light that separates you from your background. For example, a monitor here, or I have this uh, LED light, but it can be a wall lamp or standing lamp, whatever you can find. Simply put, not necessarily a professional light. Do pay attention not to make it brighter than the rest of the image though. You'll need a few things to make your background a little bit more interesting. A blank background is boring, so you'll need some texture and depth to your image. And even if you have 5 meters of space behind you, if it's only a wide background, the space won't be created because there is no texture in it. Here, for example, I have a simple desk set up, but it creates the depth to the image. But in other videos I make, you might see this camera-shaped clock and some lenses on the table as well as a camera. It's also good not to go crazy with this either, as that can distract people. A good old bedroom background, for example, is almost enough without any additional touches to it. It has depth, texture and most likely an effect light. So I left this one as the last because it really isn't the most important one. But if you work from scripts like me, having a teleprompter will speed up your workflow by like a thousand percent and will help you stay on track of the content of your video. Now while you do need to get used to using a teleprompter, with practice you'll be just fine. It goes without saying, but you need a video editor tool as well. Whatever your choice might be, make sure that you also get the Uniconverter. Why do you need it? Well, I'll tell you. It's a multimedia tool with functions that you can utilize for content creation on a daily basis. I'm talking about AI tools such as a script generator, thumbnail maker, speech to text converter, subtitle creator, and furthermore, it has a powerful video, audio, and image converter, not to mention tools that you can use to enhance images and videos. So if I were you, I'd get it from videoconverter.wondershare.com. Now I know, unfortunately, video and studio equipment is expensive, but you don't need the best and most expensive of everything. I would put the most money to the camera, lens, and microphone combo, and then to the rest. A cheap tripod is enough to just hold your camera and a cheap softbox or ring light will also do the job. I got my softboxes for like 60 bucks almost 10 years ago with a set of light bulbs and they still work. All in all, these are the most essential pieces of equipment for a nice YouTube studio in my opinion. Leave a like if you found this video helpful and subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you for watching, I'll catch you in the next video.